Hey guys, welcome to 6.2. So here is where we'll start to look at the details of how work and energy are closely related and what they actually mean. So hang on tight. This video is the fundamental backbone of the entire chapter. Okay, once you once you uh, go through this video, if you really understand the core concept, you should be able to do all kinds of questions. But don't worry, I'll still create extra videos to help us understand work better. So what is work done? So that's the main idea. Now, work done, if I ask you to remember what it is, you may say, oh, miss, miss, miss. I know, work done is force times distance. Hey, wait, 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 wait. Warning, warning. Don't write that in an exam, okay? A-levels, you want to say, work means a force and displacement in direction of the force. How much work have you done in pushing a box? You need to think about this thing. So this is the definition you want to remember. And it's basically describing a maths equation in English sentence. So the, the idea is work done is force vector times, or I should say more accurately, the dot product with displacement. Displacement means change in distance, basically. Okay. So the W is a way we simplify work done, work or work. Okay. And what's the unit of work? Yesterday I mentioned joules, right? So J is the most common one. Joules, energy, work done. Um, because work is change in energy. But also there are other ways to write the uh, unit of work. Based on this equation, force times displacement, you can say the unit is also Newton force times displacement. So meter. Also can or? So this is another way you, you may see the unit. Okay, don't confuse this with the previous unit on torque and moments because torque ah, is also force times distance. But although they're the same units, same formula, but they are measuring different quantities. Okay, that one is force times perpendicular distance. This one is you don't want perpendicular, ah, you want them to be in the same direction. So another way of writing this uh, unit is if you want to break to SI base units, Newton, you can break down to kilogram mass times acceleration. So acceleration times mass times meter. Sorry, eh? meter, meter. So kgm square s two. This is another way you can write their units. Okay. So in chapter one, if you see those kind of questions about units, derived units, base SI, this is how you want to talk about it. Anyway, so this is the main equation you want to remember. And it's so important that if you really know to apply this one in all situations, you can pretty much solve all the work-related problems already. But don't worry, like I mentioned earlier, we'll go through, we'll make more videos after this to apply in each kind of scenario. So anyway, how, how do we think of this physically? Imagine you see a box on the floor. You tie a rope to it and you try to pull the box over your shoulder. Pull, 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 pull. So that is you trying to apply a force to the box. And while you're pulling the box, you're doing work on the box. So once you do work on the box, the box is going to experience a change in energy. In this case, you know all oh, kinetic energy because it starts to move. Ma. Okay, anyway, don't worry about that. We're looking at the basics. So you're going to pull this box over until it moves a certain distance away. Now that change in distance we call displacement. So you can choose, I say from the middle to the middle. That will be my displacement vector. And draw a blue line that goes over there. If you want to choose the side of the box to the side of the box, also can. It's the, it's the same thing, still displacement. So, uh-oh, we have a problem here. Remember I said the product of force and displacement in the direction of the force? But, but, but the, the S and the v, uh, F is not aligned. They're kind of pointing in different directions. They're not parallel. So, you need to resolve the force into the horizontal so that it is the same direction as the displacement. So if I say this some angle, this is the uh, fx of this case, la, which, is in the, which is parallel to your displacement. So if you want to calculate force, uh, sorry, calculate work, work in this case will be, you know, you already resolve parallel, parallel. You don't have to write the vectors anymore. You can say it is f cos theta times s. No more dot product, no more uh, vector arrow. So it's just fs cos theta. 
Now, if you have taken a maths class before or you're taking maths class now and you remember your vector stuff, you may realize that this up here is a dot product. And there's a shortcut formula which basically gets you to this bottom one here, fs cos theta. Angle between two vectors is theta. So f times s magnitude times cos of the angle between. Don't worry if you don't know that. There's two ways to think about this. One is the maths uh, dot product idea. One is just resolve them in the same direction. Then only you can multiply their magnitude. Okay, remember, remember. Uh. So if you have something on a slope, don't panic. Same idea. If this slope inclined plane is at an angle, you will want your force to be resolved in that direction times the displacement vector. I should say they're all vectors. So this one, no problem. They're already in the same, uh, what you call that? Same, 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 same. They are parallel, they're in the same direction, so you can multiply them together already. So F times S in this case. Okay, how much force is done in this distance? Now, I think that's all for the main idea. Any questions? Please remember to ask them based on this basic idea because later you will have to apply this many, many, in many, many different situations. So one more thing you need to know about work done is how to think of force and work done. Where's my work done? Work done in terms of graphs. So here, let's say we have an X and Y graph. On the Y axis, let's say it's F, force. Y X axis is displacement. So if I have some kind of function like that, I don't know, and I say, hmm, I found the area under this graph. What does the area under this graph represent, actually? Take a guess. Work done. If you guessed work done, ding ding, you're correct. So this area under a FS curve is actually the work done because of a force acting on an object along some displacement. Okay, so if you want to stop here and skip to the next slide, you can do that because... In the next little bit, I'm going to explain why this is so, but there is some math involved. A warning, warning. So, uh, yeah, there'll be some math involved. You don't need to know this at A-levels. Okay, It's not required, but you may encounter it in university level kind of physics. So, this is the reason why the area underneath is the work done. Backstory first. So, the original OG form of this work done equation is actually dw. DW is just a small change in work, small amount of work, equals to a force that changes depending where along the displacement you are. Okay, S is, remember, from left to right, um, F is this one. Okay, uh, F bracket S basically is a function, which is just a way of writing how the force will change along S. Okay, so that dots with a small amount of displacement vector. Now remember earlier, if we say they are, the force and the displacement are already aligned, we resolve everything, then okay. If it aligns, then great. Then we can ignore the vector vector stuff. So okay, so fs ds is dw. Now if we do what we call an integration, I integrate both sides. Integrate dw, integrate fs ds. Okay, this squiggly line basically means integral. Integrate 1w, okay. So if I integrate them, what I get is w equals to a function of s ds. Now, uh, in the world of maths, whenever you see the integral of a function, it means area under the curve. So this whole thing equals to area that is shaded over there. Okay? The integral basically means area under the fs curve. So f bracket s is... That's what it means. If we take it a step further and say, well, uh, what if f is constant? So if f is constant, then your integral f ds. And if it's constant, you can basically take it out of the integral. All that's left is ds. Okay, so put a 1 there, la, 1 ds, which means you will get fs. So this is actually the full long way of how this w equals to fs equation came about. Okay, but the main idea of area 
comes here, this line here. This math idea is why uh, the area under FS curve is work done. Okay, so don't worry if you can't remember the math, just know that. Okay, area under FS is work done, work done, work done. Okay, so I'm going to show you one example for now about this charge in electric field because it's one of the weird ones which we will not encounter until later chapter 17 or so. So by the way, side note, you will see more of electric fields in chapter 17. It's not so much in this chapter, but I'm just going to use this as an example here. Okay, so a positive charge experiences a force when placed in an electric field. So this little guy right here is positive. Okay, the charge is moved from X to Y. What is the change in potential energy of the charge? So change in energy is basically, they're asking what is the work done? Change in energy. So if you're wondering like, uh, how do you find this? Remember, work is force times distance and both are vectors. So force is this one. Displacement, I said distance, didn't I? I should say displacement. So force times displacement is Fs. They're both aligned in the same direction. So you know there's going to be a Fs somewhere. So if you look at the answer choices, Fs, Fs, it's not Fr. Fr is something else. Fs is what you're looking for. But is it a decrease or increase? <gasps> oh, okay. To not panic. Here on the left side, imagine there is a positive plate. Now in electric fields, the direction of the arrow is always pointing out and away from the positive. So positive go to the negative. So you see the arrow pointing? Okay, means this side is the negative. It's very similar to gravitational fields, by the way. All the arrows point down to the center of the earth. So up here is where there's a high potential for this little positive charge. Down here is, uh, no, no space to write, low potential. So you're going from a high potential to a low potential. So you're decreasing by Fs. So in that sense, you want to choose decrease Fs. Another way to think of it is, this electric field is doing work, trying to pull this particle down. So the pull, not down, uh, pull, to the right, okay? So this electric field is doing work to pull the particle to the right, and what is the work done? Work done uh, is, the magnitude is Fs. So for that particle, that little fella's uh, energy is gonna decrease by Fs because of that work done. So that's why I call the change in potential energy. So this is one quick weird example I picked up. Most of them are not this weird. This is, um, yeah, most of them are not this weird. Most of them are calculations, more familiar stuff. I chose this because it's weird. Okay, so this is one example to get, get us started to think about arrows. Here, the point is the arrows, okay? S vector and F vector in the same direction, so just choose Fs. Uh, in the next coming videos, we'll look at more of the different changes in energy. So to summarize, uh, remember this diagram? We're going to look at next part the different different kinds of work done to change energy so in unit 6.2 now we are here so just remember the key point work done is a change in energy and today we add a new uh, idea change in energy is also force times displacement uh which form do you want to write it let's write in the full form force times displacement. If they are in the same direction, F and S, it's just force, just the magnitude times displacement. Okay, so this is the add-on that we have added today. Work done is change energy, also force times displacement. Next up in the few videos, okay, we'll look at the main idea. I'm going to go through some application kind of scenarios for different kinds of energy. So we're going to look at kinetic energy, potential, work done on gas, work done by friction, those different ways. Because most of the A-level questions revolve around these kinds. So hang tight. If you want to go ahead and already start trying out the past year questions for this whole uh, unit, you can do so. 
But as I slowly release videos and come back and check and see, oh, that's how you think about kinetic energy, potential, and all kinds of other stuff. Fun stuff. All right, so I'll see you all in the next bit for all the applications on different kinds of changes, no, changes in different kinds of energy.